The following podcast is brought to you by the Ebb Tide Treatment Center. Many people wrestle with addiction. You don't have to. Reach out to the Ebb Tide Treatment Center, where they wish to empower each individual encountered with the support, hope, and tools required for long-term sobriety. Priding themselves on providing the best possible treatment experience for you and your loved ones based on unique needs. They're committed to breaking the stigma that plagues those suffering with addiction and their families by educating and bringing awareness to the community. The Ebb Tide Treatment Center provides individual and group therapy, multiple recovery pathways for support, evidence-based clinical support, integrated aftercare social reintegration, personalized treatment planning, program addressing whole life health and Vivitrol program all available. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, reach out to them at EBB tide tc.com or call Once again, everybody, thanks for listening to AIW's The Card is Going to Change. Before we get into this week's episode, as always, I want to give a shout out to our sponsors that help us bring the show to you for free each and every week. Firstly, thanks to Angelo's Pizza. They're feeding us here as they always do while we record, and they, of course, bring pizza to you at our live events at Mount Carmel. If you want to try more of their pizza or anything else on their menu, it's all delicious. Head to Angelo's on Madison Avenue in Lakewood, Ohio. And thanks to Smart Mark Video, they record all of our live events. And if you want to relive any of those or watch them for the first time, you can purchase that on DVD or digital download from smartmarkvideo.com. And additionally, head to powerbomb.tv, sign up using the code ABSOLUTE, and you will get a 20-day trial for free. And then stick around and just keep watching the shows that we put out there from the AIW archives. And as always, thanks to Jack Prince, who helps take care of all of our printing and graphic design needs. They can do all of that and more for you, whether it be banners, t-shirts, business cards, flyers, everything and anything. For all that they have to offer, head to jackprince.com. That's jakprince.com. That's right. And that voice that you heard is Alex Worldwide Keller. He'll be on this episode along with Dr. Daniel C. Rockingham and, of course, AIW owner John Thorne. My name is Steve Guy. I am your moderator of sorts. And uh, this episode, we'll be talking about Hell on Earth 13, which took place in November at Mount Carmel. Uh, What a show it was. I mean, all around. Welcome welcome back to the podcast after a long sabbatical. Yeah. Yeah. It's been, Uh, been since the summer. Yeah, somewhere in there. Uh, wait, no, I was on. Yeah, he was on the uh, student round table. Yeah, student round okay, table. Right. I was in the sabbatical. This year is post sabbatical. Uh, Hell on Earth was my return to the after party, and boy did I ever. Yeah, let's. Uh, I mean, before before we get before we get to the show, let's let, let's let's talk about the uh, how how you you've handled uh, re-entering the world of alcohol. Uh well, uh, you know, it's been like I don't know, like what month or so now. And I've gotten real, real drunk a couple of times. And then also, I've had these weird nights where I go out to the bar and I'll have three drinks and be like, yeah, that's okay. And then I just go home. Oh, you're fine. You're learning how to drink like an adult. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but there are other nights where I just forget what everything is. You know, you, you know, as uh, we discovered last week, you may have to teach Dr. Dan how to drink like an adult. Hey, I've, I've, <laughs> I, I, I did well on Hell on Earth, as most people could attest. I did well. Did you I know. I, that night? I, I saw I, you catching some heat, but uh, I, I had a few beers. But uh, Duke made sure he shamed me for it while I grabbed him out of the cooler. <laughs> yeah, everybody shamed you for it because you have a reputation. You 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 are actually becoming the new worldwide of drinking. You're a Bud Light Buster. <laughs> hey, I'm I'm definitely pulling myself back from alcohol consumption at professional wrestling shows and or events. It's uh, it's one way to do it. I mean, maybe uh, maybe we'll have you you back on uh, on New Year's Day to talk about uh, your 
your life in the sabbatical and your goals going forward after uh, this newfound uh, religious experience you've uh, gone through? Oh, I had a few, but uh, <laughs> um, allegedly. Well, everybody's sober for this episode, I think. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Not even hung over. Worldwide didn't even give in to the temptation at the gas station of buying a beer. Oh, of course, Dr. Dan was trying to get some alcohol bought before we fired up the, the oh, recording equipment. Of course. Real I gave Worldwide man. an opportunity. He turned it down. I was real happy. He he wanted Worldwide to go for the opportunity so then he could, in fact, get drunk himself. If they had a Bloody really. Mary in a can, I would have been on that. But I don't think I could have handled, record, handled recording with both of you drunk. I, I, would, I wouldn't hit you. I promise. You're, we're in your own. Here. We're in your wonderful studio apartment right now. Yeah, there's a, you, as you see, yeah, there's a weapon. There. Change the scenery. <laughs> I think the only podcast that was ever recorded here was with Swaggle. I fell asleep. Uh, I think so. Yeah. So here that we was are a again. late night one, wasn't it? It was a very late night one. Yeah. Hell on earth was a late night. Tell you what. But, uh, <laughs> oh man, the latest of nights. <laughs> Was it yeah. a late night? It was very uh, late. After after party. Uh, oh yeah, I ducked out of the after after party. It was. Uh, it was. Even, long. I didn't even make it there. It's uh, well. That's because yeah, the after party was also. <laughs> we'll we'll get to that once we, we once we get through the show. Let's get to the 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 before the before show. You know the before yeah. before before the before show. The actual show. <laughs> I think we we talked about this before recording, and thankfully this is one of those shows where there wasn't a lot of drama leading up to it in terms of hey we got to change i just, I just want to thank everybody for making it a success too by the way because i was very nervous if you go a couple weeks back that's true yeah did you feel let's start there did you feel good once we were there um so i, I have this thing to where i am scared to go upstairs as doors are open like <laughs> i just kind of hang out in the locker room and you know talk to people or you know go over different aspects of the show but in reality, it's just like my own self fear of like walking upstairs and seeing an empty like building. Yeah. Uh, so I, I give it I I give it to like right before match one is getting ready to start before I uh you know before I go upstairs. So I I was I was nervous, but I was also very pleasantly surprised when, once I did go upstairs. It was interesting because with no. Uh, true special meet and greet. Everybody was in their seats and ready to go at like seven o'clock. I'm like, oh shit, we still have <laughs> half an hour before we start this thing. Yeah, I mean, that, and that was another thing that I was worried about because we, you know, I had been trying to get, you know, like I, 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 I'm trying to do more with the meet and greets and stuff like that, just because it just helps, you know, get people through the door. Yeah. Um, because you know, it's just you're, you're going to attract more casual wrestling fans that way. Right. As opposed to just come see you wrestling. So I was a little nervous because I had been trying to get, you know, some sort of major attraction for, you know, the, the whole time off. And it just it just was not it was not happening. Like, you know, uh, there was a big there was like a big convention show uh, wrestlecade that was going on that weekend in the Carolinas. So uh, a lot of these guys were, you know, tied up already doing, you know, doing another signing. So it was kind of like, all right, you know, like let's, let's, let's go for it and see what happens. Yeah. Let's just see what we do. And I mean, it was very well attended. Yeah. Uh, Thankfully I had some melt gift cards and (laughs) t-shirts to do some trivia with, or I don't know uh, how we would have filled that half an hour. (laughs) I feel like people got a little antsy. Well, you know, it's just, uh, the thing that I will say that since, um, you know, we, we've, uh, kind of been all working it's it's, it's kind of like uh, aw's kind of set up now like it, it with like a structure and you know we've all kind of had like almost like um you know like there's just different people kind of handling different aspects of things and it's more delegated now so to speak yeah. um and it, one of the things that i think has been vastly improved on is getting the doors open on time and starting the show on time uh <laughs> which was never a huge priority of Biggins because <laughs> he just wanted to hang out, you know. And uh, right. if he was having a if he was having a conversation, uh, you know, uh, with somebody at the door, that door <laughs> wasn't opening on time uh, <laughs> until he was done. So, uh, you know, that's one thing that we've we've definitely improved on. So, you know, people ready and waiting a half hour in advance. Uh, I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. No. We Couldn't have had better weather for it too either. It was like what great day. degrees. Yeah, yeah, it was a nice day. Not like we that. also thank everyone for not being at the venue. 
before five o'clock. Yeah, that, they did that a great was job. very well. Everybody did a good job with that. Very, yeah. very happy with all of you for doing that. Yeah, and please continue to do that. You know, uh, uh, there, there's plenty of places in in the uh, the you know the general vicinity if you would like to go hang out worldwide. Is I know definitely trying to push a pre party aspect to <laughs> AIW. Uh, he's, br- he, he's he's brought up in the in the board meetings as of late, but uh, well, the board meeting I'm is just a we group. have an after party spot. There's people that pregame. Well, why not get? Uh, hey, I'm with you. I, hour pre spot. I'm with you. I was the only one that saw saw your point. As long as no, no, the I was there. Go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks for thanks for you know uh, respecting that and showing up after five o'clock. Um, that's definitely going to be a thing going forward. And just, you know, make sure, let's not make sure it's like, oh, we did it one time now, like, let's go back to how things were. Like, this has to be an ongoing thing. Right. We've got, uh, we've got a show coming up here in a couple of weeks, so make sure you do that then as well. Yeah, 5 p.m., please. On 1229. Please and thank you. So, I think, uh, let's start with this. Well, the first match was Matthew Justice and Sean Schultz. And again, you kept with... Uh, something that you've been doing as of late. This is kind of like this was one of those unannounced matches, right? Uh, I just think you know, it's it, it, like this is no offense to Sean Schultz or Matthew Justice whatsoever, but advertising advertising them on a on a card. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be imperative to selling the show. You know what I mean? Right. However, I I do think that it gets a certain reaction. Uh, when they are there and people thought that they were not, you know, like, I just think it's, it's just one of those added, like, oh, this is a cool little, you know, special, you know, yeah. special edition sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's like old ECW shows where they'd have a few like net matches announced and then a bunch of other shit would just sort of like flow into each other and you just like get fucking like right. fun ass matches. And like, I think, you know, like I've been saying, like, it's more. I think wrestling's turning more into the live experience and stuff like that. So, like, you know, just a little, just a little, like, oh, you know, a little extra thing. I think might go a long way as far as you know with the with the fans and the crowd. And you know, like uh, the crowd definitely loves Matthew Justice. Um, and uh, you know, I, I just think it was a and they appropriately uh, dislike and loathe, yeah, Sean Schultz as they're supposed to. So I I think it was uh, oh, tan. He's great tan, very va- gorgeous tan, very vascular too. Yeah, worldwide is very jealous of his tan. But uh, I just thought it was a nice little way to start the show off. Well, the next match is a guy who finally makes his singles debut at AIW. Ooh. We have Magnum CK take on PB Smooth. Um, so this match, I think, um, this may sound ridiculous to a lot of people because, you know, these are like traditional big guy wrestlers, but I think these guys both walked in with a lot more to prove, uh, than most people would think. Uh, and I definitely think they delivered. I think PB smooth finally, uh, finally looked like he was a comfortable professional wrestler for once instead of, I think that he was always in his head as like, kind of like faking it to make it so to, so to speak, like, Mm -hmm. I have to do this. I have to act like this. This is what somebody my size is supposed to do. And I think that was really kind of uh, holding back his progression yeah. uh, because he is naturally athletic. Yeah, and he's he, very athletic. And he very. can do a lot of things. But, you know, when you go out and you do all these shows in these small towns, you know, wherever, you know, it's like one thing, you know, uh, you're told to do something at training and, you know, uh, try things. And then you go to these shows and it's like, no brother, don't do this brother, 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 don't do that. You know, uh, I think a lot of that information kind of, uh, got him a little, uh, a little uh, uncomfortable and uncertain as to how and what he's supposed to do. And I think finally, this is the first show to where, uh, he went out there and it was kind of like, fuck it. I'm gonna, you know, I'm going to try some stuff. Uh, and he he definitely looked a lot more comfortable and a lot less, you know, robotic and going through the motions so, sort of thing. Well, and he also had a match with a guy that was near his size, and Magnum also every bit the athlete. So it's like you know they, I don't know who to compare it to or liken it to, but it's not like if it's PB and he's this big guy taking on somebody smaller. You, it's somebody his size and maybe they could do a little bit more, and, I, and it just looked. And I think like a regular wrestling match with big guys. And I think uh, you know Magnum CK has a, a 
like I've said it before, he has a tremendous upside to him, and he has a ton to prove because he's never been anywhere on you know a, a, a level of you know uh, this sort of independent wrestling. You know, he's he's uh, he's been around for a long time and kind of like uh, you know I don't want to I, I don't want to say like lesser than independent wrestling, but like not something that is going to be viewed by by as many people and have as much exposure. So I think that he walked in with. Uh, a lot of kind of nerves, but a lot of like, like uh, kind of like a chip on a shoulder. Like, yeah, yeah I'm, su- I'm supposed to be here. Uh, I've known I'm supposed to, you know, I'm supposed to be here. And from what he's already get, you know, he's already gotten bookings on the East coast already because of his performance. Um, When's the last time people went crazy at an AIW show for an elbow drop from the top rope? I, it was, it was insane. <laughs> it's but, been a while. <laughs> But you know what? Uh, like, uh, it worked. It it worked for those guys because they it are really big. Did. Yeah, and I think it just you know goes to that stereotype of you're not gonna see big guy wrestlers do you know do anything uh, you know, and they went out and they did all sorts of stuff. And I think you know they had a lot of different pieces of the puzzle to play with with the other production guys and stuff like that. Right, and that's what I was going to say. You know, we saw more of the growth of the production in general there. Derek, director, and Frankie Flynn inserting themselves a, a little bit into the match. Worldwide's nemes- nemesis. Nemesi. Nemesi. It's good to be on this side of the fence of being your nemesis. I'm yeah, not going to yeah. lie. <laughs> yeah, you're all right for now. But, for now. Um, no, Magnum is big old boy. but He is a big brother. And he also might be just... I kind of hate him because he's just so nice. He's very nice. Like he's very nice. Well, like his seems like his life's together. Uh, let's let's get into this for a second. <laughs> Worldwide hates anybody that is nice and also equally athletic. Uh, <laughs> he wants them to be like dickheads, so he has an excuse to hate them. But since no, no, they are no. not, he it's hates like, them. This came it's out like a the weird like too. reverse Schadenfreude type of a deal where like I just no, he's just a good pure human, and I love that about him. But also, I'm intensely jealous of that. Because you're not that good of a human. Not a good human. I'm an all right human, and I'm trying by God. But, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, no, Magnum's got a whole bunch of upsides, and uh, I love him. That backside, I'll awesome. tell you what. Yeah, yeah, he's you know, and he's a big guy, and uh, you know, I I think there's nothing uh, nothing but potential for for the whole group. You know, I think uh, you know this this whole group is kind of like. Um, you know, like I, I, I'll always say it, things are kind of almost devolving back to like, uh, how wrestling was, you know, 20 years ago to where it's like a big attraction and a good local base. And I think, you know, guys like this who have characters and gimmicks and, you know, they have like a shtick. I think that that's going to go a long way in this current kind of independent wrestling landscape. And I think the, the production is definitely something is the more that they, work with each other i think it's gonna uh uh, i think you know even though they are heels i think it's gonna be one of those things where people really enjoy them almost playing the part of heels you know what i mean like it's like a weird like it's like a weird like i i don't know how many layered thing but it's like they're great heels and i think people like like the fact that they are just good heels to that point did you see his entrance uh he, so he walked out, he's got his cape, and he just had his arms outstretched, and he just walked across oh, yeah, and yeah, left yeah. his Thunder, arms outstretched, th- and hitting like, people in the head and <laughs> yeah. in the face. Yeah, but yeah, people yeah. were loving that, you know? Some yeah, people he, were getting out of the way, and some people were like, yes, hit me in the face. Magnum people, CK gives me a real Thunderlips vibe. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> people can tell when someone's genuine, and that whole group, that they're all, all in on it, and yeah. it definitely shows. So in the, the match after that is... Uh, the Bone Collector, Dominic Greeny, and Ethan Page, and um, Mr. Page taking the time to recite what was on the wall. There was a uh, because this gymnasium they have basketball games, CYO games, CYO games, and there was a pre-game prayer and post-game prayer on the wall. And uh, he took it upon himself to recite the pre-game prayer. <laughs> there, into a I have prayer. I participated in four years of CYO sports here in the Cleveland area. Yeah. And I know those prayers by heart still. <laughs> I walked in the gym and I saw them on the wall, and I'm like, there's no way. They have just giant blown up. They were huge. Giant blown up prayer cards on the wall. A little nostalgia for you? Yeah. <laughs> and as soon as I heard heard uh, Ethan Page ask the crowd if they wanted to uh, recite the pregame prayer, I just I lost it. I'm like, this is the best I thing. I mean, I, th- I think that goes to, uh, you know, that's a credit to 
how good Ethan Page is and you know, just another one of those live experience things. Like that's yeah. you can't go out with that plan, you know what I mean? Like um he went out and he saw that and he called that audible and it didn't matter how good the match was, the match was great. But all right. anyone is remembering is that you know, that he thought of that, you know what I mean? Just something so dumb and small. He's like, let's read these prayers real quick. Just just by just checking out his environment. And, you know, I, I think m- more wrestlers need to kind of think, like, outside the box and, you know, be be ready to, you know, kind of stray from the plan, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, taking the moment more so. Right. Uh, yes. You hear that worldwide? Yeah. So Dom wins. And then, uh, as Ethan Page had said beforehand, he wanted to make sure whoever won – does the post game prayer? So Dom then recites the post game prayer as they're in the ring together. <laughs> Ad libbed a little bit, you know, each line. Yeah, but it was uh, did, yeah, they both ad libbed a little bit to make it relevant to wrestling. Which I think Dom might have been a little nervous. He's not he's not too comfortable on the on the live mic. I don't think yet. <laughs> but it made for like you said, made for a good uh, live audience experience. And uh, I yeah. just you know, it just added to like a fun environment. I think. Yeah. And, well, and I think. Even though maybe he's not as comfortable on the mic, it it was a it showed a different side of Dom for some a looser people. side. Yeah, yeah. because then, everybody sees him just being the bone collector and being this especially Doctor Dan as we learned last week. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever think that uh, Dominic Garini would be reciting prayers, Doctor Dan? No, not at all. Loosening I mean, he's up. He's Italian. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was good to see him. Uh, you know, everyone sees him like that. Like, and I see him. Like we said, like, you know, what we have in common and everything, like on the road, seeing him be able to kind of put his little bit of uh, personality out there with everybody was uh, a good thing to see. Yeah. So our next match is where uh, we had the first bit of changes uh, going to the card, and it's a 10-man tag. It's the Young No Consequences team, uh, and they took on the combined team of Super Cop Dick Justice, the Weird World. And uh, the team of PME, Philly Marino Experience, which, as it turns out, Philly was not originally in this match. Neither was Marino. Neither was Marino. Um, so it was supposed to be Space Monkey. And it was supposed to be Colt Cabana. And Colt Cabana. Initially, which never got announced. Um, and then, you know, when Jimmy Jacobs got released and uh, him and I started talking, and uh, I wasn't sure if we were going to be able to work something out initially um just because you know he's he was getting a ton of offers um but uh i I made sure not to announce that match because i thought you know worst case scenario i I could fill somebody else in the cabana spot and uh, i thought cabana and jimmy jacobs would be a, a a good like you know welcome back to the indies sort of thing match for for jimmy jacobs somebody you know uh he's 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 used to and accustomed to working with and stuff like that so uh then uh, I end up, I do work out a you know something with Jimmy Jacobs, uh, so I make the switch and I decide I'm just gonna put Philly in there, you know, or Marino in there, uh, just because uh, you know he's just he's smaller and I, I thought that he would work well with the other guys on the other team. Uh, and then uh, the weekend before, yeah, the weekend before, uh. At, Space Monkey did like a moonsault to the floor at Freelance and nobody caught him and he just like ate shit and died basically and hit his head really and um he did offer to wrestle still uh but I I said that that probably would not be uh the wisest of decisions yeah. you know coming off yeah. of you know hitting hitting your head and you know there's a lot of issues with concussions and stuff going on these days oh, for sure. um you know I watched that Will Smith movie man I'm hip I'm hip to the concussion <laughs> to the concussion problems. So, uh, you know, I said, it's probably, it's probably wise if you take some time off. Um, you know, it's a five, it's a five man, you know, five on five anyway. Um, so I, I, I thought, you know, let's just put Philly in there now and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll roll with that change. Yeah. I mean, it worked out well, everybody. Yeah. It was a fun little match. Uh, I'd like, you didn't come out on the winning end though. No, but you know. Oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot. Worldwide was even in this match. Oh, <laughs> bro, you want to talk about calling stuff on the fly? Definitely did not forget that. The, worldwide was a wild card that night. I was every which way. No, I had all types of ideas going into this thing. Uh, just, <laughs> I bet. Well, Let's I feel hear. like Dick Justice hates me because anytime I'm in a match with him, I always have an idea for a gun spot, and that idea <laughs> is never used. Though, 
This gun spot would have been phenomenal, you, but whatever. You did have a uh, a nice little showing, a little back and forth of chops well, with young Joshua Bishop. Let me tell you my motivation. Uh-huh. Because especially uh, when Colt, like when it was first broached to me that uh, you know we'd be like on a team with like Colt and Space Justice, I was like, and we're up against no consequences. Their whole deal is like they're taking on you know like the vets of like AIW and stuff. Right. And the weird world. We're not vets, but <laughs> use that term it's, loosely. It's nice to be considered a vet. So I was going like my motivation for this match is I wanted to be the shindy vet. So if they were real big, I was going to chop them. And if they were real small, I was going to hit them with some very involved slams. <laughs> <laughs> Sound familiar? Anyway, fuck it. Uh, so either way, things got chopped down, so to speak. And it just turned into a weird little exchange with uh, me and Josh Bishop. Motherfucker ruined my tan. How did you do that? Oh, fucking with this goddamn trim your fingernails or something, bro. I just like I didn't notice till He's like got a week those big later. Twan fingernails. Yeah, something like that. Because, but yeah, so we had a nice little uh, chop exchange and then ate some dives. There's a Terry Funk ladder spot somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, right towards the end. Yeah, it was a fun little match. I How do time. you feel about it? Uh, well, you were talking about calling audibles. Uh, we came out and uh, we were getting a hard USA chant because of Dick Justice. <laughs> right. And Weird Body was riding along with it. But me, if you watch the video, I'm just kind of sort of trying to quiet everyone down. I'm like, no, no, we really don't need to do this right now. Why? What's wrong with the USA? Yeah. Here's the thing, man. Last year, during one of my uh, near retirements, it was deep in the election season. <laughs> and I was just seeing these Trump rallies hitting uh, pro wrestling USA chants. And... Uh, Give you some flashbacks. It was like, just like, I, it made the whole thing fucking feel dirty to me. And I was just like, <laughs> I am not about this. I can't be a party to this. <laughs> so either way, I appreciated the USA chant, but also, well, we didn't really have a name that was uh, really all that chantable. So <laughs> <laughs> the weird dick experience was just not going to happen. Is that a working title? Uh, that's did something you, somebody came up with after the, after the fact, actually. But yeah, weird dick experience. Um, not didn't come out on the winning end, but you know, gave it our all. The good showing too. Yeah, did all right. Ah, worldwide. I don't know, man. You looked a little I rusty. Mean, Mar- Marino went out there. He was killing it. Worldwide, oh, you looked a little rusty in there. Well, maybe if I'd thrown a dive in, you know. Where was that suicide dive at? That tope. <sighs> well, you know, I uh, whipped that one out at uh, Wrestle Rager two, and uh, I think I might still be recharging the batteries on that boy. <laughs> <laughs> The last time we saw you die before that was the, the, the Team Johnny versus Candace match. Oh, yeah. That, that was, was the last time, too. Yeah, that so was you, uh, last time for a reason. I uh, <laughs> was happy to have you and uh, somebody else there. What, what happened? Did every, it go wrong? Did it go awry? Uh, I just, uh, I think, I didn't get a head of steam that I uh, really did. We made sure he was safe. That's all that mattered. Yes, I did not die. So about every two years, we'll see a dive? Uh, I'd say about like nine months. You know, it's oh, like okay. a baby. You got to like, you know, you gotta make really, him wait you got to incubate huh? this thing. You got to make yeah. him wait for it. Also for shots, you know, just like buy me shots. <laughs> you going to you gonna tease it a little bit? Yeah. Build up to it? Yeah. Freaking. Start a tip jar at your gimmick table. Ooh. Tip, oh, tips for that dives. That was another sad story for that day. But because um, we had a booking with another company a couple weeks before, and somehow in moving the U-Haul van around and this and that and da 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 the Weird World's Mizzurch got misplaced. And uh, How much merch did you lose? Probably about... M- misplaced? Retail value, about 300 to $500. Retail? Uh, Re- <laughs> well, I got $20 a shirt somewhere in there. It was like 15 to like 25... Uh, yeah, 15 to 25 shirts, which... I was gutted when I thought it was maybe at the storage unit. It was not at the storage unit. But who who had was the last one with the U-Haul truck? That would be me. But <laughs> they had these goddamn stupid uh, fucking. Uh, Did you call and ask? Hey, did you find ass- a box? Well, no, because like we were almost a hundred percent that uh, one. Of I'm the sure new you can still call. Put it into the. That place can't find their ass with two fucking hands. They're not going to fucking have their... Go- they're not going to fucking keep a goddamn lettuce box full of t-shirts. Hey, they got one person working the propane and the front desk. Come well, we'll on, never man. get that sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> well, give them, a, give, them a, give them a shout tomorrow. Yeah, I'll give them a shout. <laughs> fucking straight between the fucking eyes. Fucking asshole. Fucking piece of shit. You lost your merch. Yeah, I know. Was- <laughs> no, you know what? The universe lost my merch, and I was real mad at the universe. But, uh... 
And I was real sad because it was three hundred to five hundred dollars worth of uh, merch, and we were already eighty dollars in the profit on the second printing of this most recent shirt. But then I was like, three hundred to five hundred dollars. But then I was like, well, technically I'd have to split that money with a weird body, so it was really only like one hundred and fifty to two hundred and fifty dollars, and that softened the blow a little bit for yeah, you. Well, yeah, but yeah, what about weird body. Uh, he was less bummed, but yeah, I was weird body is your money guy. With weird the whole body, deal. Uh, more bummed about. The loss of merch or the movie situation? We haven't discussed the movie situation. <laughs> I was in a movie that went to Sundance. I don't need to be in other movies. <laughs> <laughs> Big star. Big star over here. Big star. Look at uh, you. Man. Well, but, uh, oof, man, that was that took a turn right there. It's in. It's in. So, moving on. The next match was uh, Lewis Linden, captain of the ship. And uh, Gringo Loco in singles action. Gringo Loco was not happy with this decision. No, he was not. <laughs> <laughs> this was another one of those extra little matches. I didn't like it. Made it on the on the on the flyer, like the event flyer. Yeah. However, I didn't announce it in advance in like a match graphic or anything. Just testing out to see if people were paying attention or not to the you know actually reading the flyers online or not he was pretty tired after that match he was well he was very he was very very upset with me he because he wants yeah. to, he wants to do multi-mans and stuff uh, especially you know after the uh, heart attack right uh and uh i said hey brother i said you, sometimes you just got to know that you could do it you know you got to believe in yourself i yeah. gave him a nice believe in yourself talk and uh you know he got through it he didn't die you know well, and he's with the consummate professional of captain of the ship right i mean you know it, it, that was that was more of a uh, that was more of a match for him to know that like you know it's everything's gonna be okay yeah. sort of thing it was an entertaining match and everything was okay he's I, doing okay now he's listening right now i enjoyed it uh and then we roll into what worldwide is deemed his favorite match of the night tom lawler and hot sauce tracy williams this is honestly the best I've seen of Tom Lawler in That's AIW saying something, yet because I feel like every review show he's we have been, with him, he's been great every yeah. time. But like, it like I think Tracy just brought something out of him, knocked something out of him, maybe that like they were just going in on each other, and it was like beautiful. And I, had I think a great he's time with that match. I think uh, you know Tom is at, at this point now been been wrestling for a few months. You know what I mean. Uh, so I think he just continues to just improve and improve and improve. And, you know, you gotta, you just gotta assume based on the level of athlete that he is, that he is going to, uh, catch on and adapt a lot faster than a regular human. And I'm just going to lay it all on the line right here, right now. Filthy Tom looking very handsome at hell on earth. <laughs> handsome Tom. <laughs> Ruggedly handsome. Handsome Tom, Tom Lawler. I'm just gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. You, you, if you didn't feel it, then you're lying to yourself because motherfucker was looking good. Does that make you dislike him? I I don't think I'm allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> Handsome Tom Lawler, as also, said by Worldwide. Uh, maybe not known to a lot of people, but uh, Filthy Tom Lawler, fresh off of a trip from Kosovo. Yeah, he yeah, did all over the damn place. Yeah, he's training uh, training soldiers how to fight. Training them. Yeah, I don't. He wasn't fighting. Oh. But he was like working with people, or whatever. Just teaching hand to hand combat on military bases. Good for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, few is right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was home for a few days and then made his way to Cleveland. Filthy Tom t told me that he wants me to pay him in a Nintendo Switch at the next show. I don't know. I don't know how that how that works. If you out. Can find one for like cheap or steal one, then that's like you know hell of a deal. Well, I can't. We don't condone stealing right now. But. Yeah. Well, all right. If one can fall off a truck, what do you mean right now? I mean, I mean, ever, but like especially right now when we're talking about it, it's being recorded. Yeah. I don't condone stealing. Yeah, but if you find one worldwide, I mean, I'm, I'll give it to him. The only kind of stealing that's uh, it's group. stealing the show. Yeah, well, that I was gonna say maybe <laughs> maybe stealing of wives. Oh, <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> wives. That's dark. Tom Waller's happily married. He won't, he does not want to girlfriend steal his life. Well, that's wife. not what I was referencing, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, Faith, uh, faithful Tom Lawler. That's who he is. Faithful Tom. That's, Lawler. That's not. Let's, I don't mean Tom Lawler. I was. We, we all know. No one else knows. Oh, Steve. I know. We all know right here. Yeah. Shout out to the Duke and his French kissing. <laughs> 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 Must be a hell of a French kisser. Hell of a French kisser, as we learned. <laughs> French last week. So. <laughs> He probably still has one of those. <laughs> I'm sure. That's for back in the day, boy. Bam! Bam! 
What's up, everybody? Alex Worldwide Keller here to tell you all about at Thrift Store Jobber, Instagram, Etsy, eBay, other vowel sounding uh, online sales opportunity platform at Delios. Well, he's got one for you this week. It's extra large, but this man was triple, no quadruple extra large. He was the beast from the east. That's right. Bam Bam Bigelow. Straight off of his late 90s WCW run, he was going to beat Goldberg's ass. And in this shirt, you could beat Goldberg's ass. All day, all night, use promo code WORLDWIDE to get 10% off your order at any of his stores. So the next match uh, we had alluded Spanish to fly. earlier, it was uh, Jimmy Jacobs and Colt Cabana, and that match was added. Of course, Colt was taken out of the 10-man tag, put into this because you were able to get Jimmy Jacobs on the show. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's what it was. That's, that's, a, that's, a, story, that's a story it. there, you know. Uh, he did do the, we did have a Jimmy Jacobs seminar before the show. Did you guys do that? Yeah, it was awesome. It was a good time? Mm-hmm. What did World, you learn? Worldwide didn't do it because he was World. mad that he discovered he lost his merch. I just uh, had a financial it. shortfall, but I still caught a fair yeah. amount of it. Shh. You were hyping it up to me. You're like, that was the seminar you really wanted to do, too. Uh, that one and Arn Anderson, but I did Arn Anderson. So, Arn was good. Uh, Jimmy was. It looked fun. He like, talked. He everyone got up there and everyone got an away, opportunity to not uh, give away too many of the secrets. Not give away too many of the everyone secrets, had an opportunity to uh, to get feedback from Jimmy, and uh, it was a. If anyone has an opportunity to do that seminar, I would absolutely 100. percent Tell someone that's not a bad investment to do. It was well intended yeah. as well, right? Very well attended. It's good. People, people from outside AIW coming from couple Florida all over. Somebody came from Florida. Kid oh, from Florida and came from Texas. Really? And they drove from Florida and Texas. Wow. How about then? Insanity. Well, that's something. Well, cool. Good. Well, the match itself was fun. Uh, there was a smooch in there. Speaking of people kissing, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a French kiss, but. Jimmy did plant one on Colt Cabana at one point during the match. Then afterwards, we got a promo with Jimmy that's on YouTube now that's getting a lot of, a lot of play uh, where he challenges Joey Janela to the 29th. And uh, he you know, says a couple choice words about his former employer. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's good to have Jimmy Jacobs back. Uh, Hell of a promo from that guy. He's, one, he's probably one of, one of the best. You know, I'd put him in Kingston, you know, one and two, depending on the day, on, as far as independent wrestling promos go. Oh, yeah. Uh, so then after that, we have a three-way tag to infinity and beyond. Uh, the boys from Jollyville and uh, the young stud. I will say the boys from Jollyville were very nervous coming into this as uh, we're like standing in the ring. And I was downstairs and like, oh, are you going to announce us as the boys from Jollyville? Because that's what you put on the flyers. And they, they thought they had a name change. And then we're standing in the ring and they're like, so uh, did you talk to Thorne? Do we have to be the boys from Jollyville? Or are you going to announce us like you usually do? I'm like, No, nah, it's good. No, you know, I'm just, trying to, just trying to, just trying to, I'm just trying to clean up the, uh, you know, the advertising, you know, right? You know, like I'm just trying to make it more, uh, more ge- appealing to the general public, generally acceptable. Fuck it. <laughs> they were, they were awfully confused and nervous, but I was like, don't worry, guys, you're still the fuckets. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to make it a little more, you know. Also caught a little, a little heat uh, from Mount Carmel. On. Um, I don't know. <laughs> like, I think for t- actually saying Mount Carmel on the Facebook event, I don't know. <laughs> they, they don't want any branding as far as, uh, on any of the advertising, really. Oh, really? So what are we supposed to just give the address or what? I guess. Yeah. I don't know. All right. A gym. So I just decided to, <laughs> I just decided to clean up that part of the ad- of the advertising, too, just in, just in case. All right. That's a good call. Good call. This Now, this match did have a uh, ridiculous a ridiculous moment in it. Where we saw T Money, that famous pounce that he does. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oof. That one's already made its rounds <coughs> on social media. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I missed it. I actually was not looking. And then I heard this big noise. And then somebody told me that Eric Ryan had died. <laughs> and everyone wants to run over there. And I said, just. He me. honestly came so close to bashing the back of his head on that bottom stair on the floor. Oh, my. I just, I just, guys, give him a second. At least let him get his last pop if he died. 
Let's not kill. Let's not. Let's not kill it. The uh, cop oh. that's like always assigned to the shows or whatever. Yeah. He came up to me like after that match, and he's like, "Yo, is that dude all right?" <laughs> and like you know, he's like he like wanted me to go check in the basement and like make sure Eric was all right. And I'm like, I went down. I'm like, yeah, he'll live. He's like, all right, good, good. I figured, <laughs> but I just wanted to be sure. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was gross. Yet but, again, Eric Ryan wonders why he wakes up and his back hurts. Yeah, he's like, I, I, I'll I'll see him, you know, at training throughout the week, and he's like, man, I'm so sore. I'm like, no fucking shit, dude. Like, <laughs> no shit. You got a list of things Eric does on a on a, a booking like. Ever, almost every booking on a daily basis. It's uh, it's it's quite the roster of uh, terrible and painful things he does. Yeah, he's got the Sabu back going, so we already see that. And uh, hey, add this to the list. Unbelievable. At one point, he came back from a booking over a weekend, came to train on Monday, and looked like someone had uh, just put an egg inside of his skull. He's like, oh yeah, you know. It's like, dude, what what are you doing? <laughs> He's, you know, we, we tried to have a sit down with him on this show and talk about it, but, uh, clearly that didn't do much of anything. It's glutton for punishment. It really is. Uh, next match is a four way between Laredo Kid, Matt Cross, DJ Z, and our guest of honor, Jody Fleisch. Who almost didn't make it into the country. Of yes. course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> and we find out that out, what, two days beforehand? Cause he was supposed to get in. He was supposed to get in on Thanksgiving. Right. He, he ends up with like a, almost a full 24 hour delay uh, because, uh, you know, he's trying to check in for his flight and there's some form that, you know, you need now to enter the country, um, which he, which he told of. me it took it takes uh, seven to 24 hours to clear. And he was already waiting to get to his gate. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a big uh, that turns into a big ordeal. Uh, and then like he goes to fill it out and like finds out that he filled it out on like a scam website that charged him $80 oh, for man. it. Uh, and so then, you know, he just fills it out at the actual airline desk. Um, and it ended up, you know, he ended up spending like $150 based on after the scam website. And then the, uh, you know, the real website to, to apply. I forget, I, I don't even remember what it's called, but some sort of form that you need to fill out. So then, uh, he misses his first flight because of this form. They tell him that they'll get him on a flight in uh, in an hour and to come to check back. You know, in about a half hour. So you know, he comes back. He comes back, and uh, they forgot that they told him that. They give you know they give his seat away. Uh, and uh, then they can't get him on a flight until the next day. He's calling me on Facebook phone calls. You know, yeah, <laughs> we never spoke to each other other than like messages. And, uh, you know, he's saying he can't even land until 6 p.m. Is that going to be okay? Uh, <laughs> so uh, I say, yeah. He had been up for a full 24 hours at that point. Uh, he ends up, you know, I don't, I tell him, you know, I'll make it work, you know, no matter what time he can get in as long as he doesn't miss the show. He ends up, uh, you know, landing at 6 p.m. on uh, in the Cleveland on Friday. And uh, he comes like you know he comes straight to the show. That I, I believe the first match had already started by the time he got he got to the building. Uh, I think so. It was just about to start at least. Yeah, he uh, yeah made it to our show uh, and then didn't make it to the rest of the, the rest, rest of, of the, the weekend. weekend. <laughs> yeah, he ends up uh, you know the match is unreal uh, as as suspected. Yeah, yeah. I had never seen anything or heard about Jody ever. I. I couldn't believe the things he was doing in that match. It was insane. Yeah, just watching for concessions, that freaking uh, backflip off the wall. Like, Jesus Christ. And then that 720 Phoenix DDT or whatever he did. 720 yeah. DDT, yeah. That's like a signature move. Super Crazy. nice, chill dude, though. I was going to say, another so guy nice. Awesome. Really nice, yeah. So, uh, you know, he he ends up hitting his leg on the barricade, which happened to him in America like 13 years earlier or something in Ring of Honor. Uh, he gets up. Everyone thinks he's hurt. He gets up, just does the rest of the match flawlessly. I talk to him. He says he's fine. Um, you know, then, uh, you know, I, I guess, you know, his adrenaline wears off. Uh, he, but he still wants to meet all the fans. You know, he starts, you know, his legs bothering him after, you know, obviously after the adrenaline wears off, uh, he stays, he meets all the fans. Um, I talk to him. I ask him if, you know, he wants to go to the after party. He says he's going to go to his hotel and, take a shower and stuff like that and then he never comes and i don't know 
what's what's going you know i don't know oh, you didn't know i didn't know all this stuff had happened yeah because i had left and then um you know uh there's derek director's girlfriend is kind of the nurse on staff uh so to speak now and uh she got she got to the to the fun house and she told me that like there was all these problems with jody fleisch's leg and uh, i had i had no idea yeah so he his leg he knew his leg was hurting and he still wanted to go to the after bar. He's like, ah, oh, I'm going to shower and see how my leg feels at that point. Maybe he will. But he was still in his gear the entire time. So he didn't know what his leg looked like until finally he's, you know, getting his regular civilian clothes on and his gear's off. And then he finally sees his leg for the first time. And it's not good. And it's not good. You can, I, I think you're able to see to his bone. Pretty yeah. much. I mean, I don't know from what I from what I heard, like it was like a like some sort of like bruise that like bubbled up through the skin and like just broke the skin. It sounded really not good. Yeah, pretty gross. So he ends up having to go to the ER. Yeah, until about five in the morning. Yeah, I from what I understand is he went to his hotel and then uh, started bleeding all over the hotel lobby. Oh my god! Yeah, <laughs> luckily two students were there. They patched him up and took him to the, right to the ER, right? Got, checked him into the hotel and then right to the ER and didn't even get to his room. Wow. And, uh, yeah, he spent the entire night at the ER, uh, and then he had more bookings throughout the weekend. So by the time he got to the ER, they had to drive to his next booking, which was for Power Bomb TV. And, you know, unfortunately he had to cancel the rest of his weekend because of how, you know, how bad his leg was. And I, he canceled a bunch of shows after he got back to, uh, to the United Kingdom as well. And then the poor guy leaves his wallet falls out of his pocket in Dominic Garini's car. Oh no. And uh you know, he had the he had to have he, he, all his money and everything was in Dom's car and he didn't discover it until you know, Dom was back in Cleveland and he cuz he was flying out of Toronto cuz he had Alpha 1 on Sunday. And, uh, you know, Dom had to mail him his, uh, his wallet and all his money back, you know, Jesus. back to the United Kingdom. That was a rough weekend. Yeah, poor Jody Fleisch. I, I hope he got his, uh, uh, his seafood chowder he was really talking to me about in the basement. <laughs> That's all he wanted. He was like, I'm going to see you in Canada. I'm like, yeah, I'll see you there on Sunday. He goes, all right, cool. He goes, you and me, can we get some uh, seafood chowder? I'm like, maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll see out Toronto. But that's all he talked about the whole weekend. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, no wonder why he doesn't come stateside. But, you know... Once every thirteen years or whatever it's been. Well, what, it's, what a number thirteen. An indication. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what it was. We'll uh, be back soon. But again, very nice guy. Hell of a match. If you've watched Hell on Earth thirteen uh, on Smart Mark Video and you're listening to this after the fact, be even more impressed now with that match, knowing <laughs> what Jody's leg was like uh, after that. Uh, and then, then it became as if people weren't already amped up. Then it's main event time. For the first time in what, a couple of years, yeah, since Absolution Ten, we yeah. see Nick Gage wrestling in an AIW wrestling ring, not just coming out telling us how he's gang affiliated, MDK, but actually in a match. Those fans, after sitting through what was that eight matches until the main event? That main event was number nine. Yeah. Those, so. those fans, you would have thought it was the first match tonight when they pulled the canvas out to cover up our nice brand new yeah. one with the one we were using. Right. Those fans immediately, it, it was like a reset button. They were ready to go. Thank goodness we had that other canvas out. Thank goodness. Because uh, the fans brought weapons. Weapons got used. Blood was shed. Which Storm says, it was not fans bring the weapons. But, but once they saw it them was downstairs, not, it, it was, was not fans it was time bring the to weapons. Go. Correct. <laughs> It was not a, supposed to be a fans bring the weapons match. These fucking fans are lunatics, dude. Did you, the did darkness you, that resides in your hearts. Did you ever think to just not use the weapons? I or, mean, or it, once you saw them talking about it on social media, you were just like, "All right, if the guys want to do it." I mean, those you're not you're Nick Gage is not gonna not use a weapon if right. it's there. <laughs> the man just got out of Though, prison. There were some weapons that were turned away. Well, I'm that, sure. Did no, you wait. see some of them that were said no to? 
I, I heard no i just heard about something to do some with of them were a little crazy a boogie board with a bunch of screws screwed through it oh yeah somebody yeah. I, I believe what do you uh, think you're gonna do with that i believe it was Je- jeff uh jeff kalb he sent me a message and said I, <laughs> I got this boogie board i screwed a bunch of screws through can i bring it i said absolutely not it's like dude. a wooden <laughs> boogie board i mean you're screwing screws through it so i'm assuming it's probably fiberglass that shit costs money like what do you, boogie why are you gonna well, well, you know oceans like, around here they weren't like Good like like cheap old like you know little pins. No, they were like real, yeah, like, you know, real screws. good like four inch like screws. Yeah, people are lunatics, man. That's all I gotta say. The match, the the match is everything you would think it is. You know, yeah. so it did guys, not disappoint. Some guys need to calm down out there. Is what we're getting at. <laughs> yeah, we need to get you guys on the podcast so we could have a little intervention with all of you. Right. Yeah, that's what <laughs> we're all what's going about on here. in your lives. That you need to see people do this to each other. Also, no. fans, just just a quick PSA. Please do not after the show is over. When the event is being cleaned up, don't pick up weapons and then attempt to hit each other with them or oh, take them this home. This is the second time we've had to talk yes. about this. We had to talk about this after Russell Rager. It's there's darkness out there. Just a lot darkness of darkness in their hearts. My God, I mean, all because worldwide didn't support their USA chance. This is what they got to do. What happened? Yeah. <sighs> Speaking of not supporting USA chance, I want to shout out first time uh, AIW live attendees at Murder Brian and the rest of the uh, Street Fight crew. Street Fight's a lovely podcast out of Columbus, anarcho leftist, good time, working class <laughs> stuff. And they came up and they had themselves a good time. Hopefully, I'll be on their podcast sometime soon. Yeah, I thought you were going to be on that podcast. Uh, well, you know, scheduling and everything. And also, they brought their families, so we weren't going to be after partying, but somewhere down the line. Well, there you have it. Well, all right. We, uh, Murder Brian. At Murder Brian. Nick Gage and Tim Dons, not the, not the only people to uh, get beat up in this match either because there was a little bit of a battle beginning like the whole thing started uh <laughs> let's let's just graze over the girl getting punched in the face and let's just get I right mean, to I the i wasn't <laughs> gonna say her let's get let's get other people let's other get, students let, got hit let's get right to the after party <laughs> all right all right i mean plenty of plenty of uh students made their uh yeah their debut, made their debut, being, debut, just debut ca- just, being just casual just you know <laughs> fodder for well, i'm just gonna take over on this show. here after party here we go because uh, the fun house yeah, because I skipped the last one because I was on the sauce sabbatical, and also I felt that being the professional student slash slave labor that I am, I would uh, do uh, you know I'd do the good brotherly thing and be a dawn to dusk boy. I'd drive the truck all day, unload the truck at the end of the night, yada yada yada. So either way, this time around, I'm off the sauce sabbatical, and I'm like, told everyone in the uh, group chat, I'm like, here's the deal. I'm going to help load the truck at the start of the day. I'm going to help load in the ring and get everything set up. And at the end of the night, I will load that truck. But once that truck is loaded, I am booking it to the fun house. (laughs) I have a couple of months of after parties to catch up on. When that U-Haul door closed worldwide, was literally making smoke on his tires. It was gone. It was out. And uh, yeah, and then things escalated. Apparently, I talked to the uh, owner of the fun house, and he thought I had a stroke. (laughs) (laughs) I was apparently very red in the face, and uh, my teeth were kind of sideways, but uh, <laughs> I just, you know, was enjoying those uh, mixed drinks there so much, you know? Dude, those those alcoholic slushies, it's not the alcohol that gets you, it's the excess of sugar entering your and body. ice, yeah. it, like the brain freeze. It makes you feel some kind of way, man, that it's not good sometimes. It's very crazy making. <laughs> I, I'm, I think it's a good thing I have yet to make it to a fun house after party. It's after a, after uh, hearing this. Okay, the, the, my, my brain freezes no less than seven times at the fun house, and like a, a very excessive and painful way. It just uh, makes you mad. Which makes you angry, and then you drink more because you, you feel like... You don't want to be defeated by it. Right, and like you just can't win it, and then uh, by the end of it, you've probably taken in fucking you know uh, seven thousand grams of sugar. Yeah. So then your body just starts shutting down, man. It's like a weird, it's a weird <laughs> thing. I heard a rumor there was a uh, filthy Tom uh, might have had a hard time with uh, those beverages, but uh, so Tom Lawler and I were having the slushies together. Handsome Tom, handsome Tom Lawler, and uh, he said, "Yeah, just get me one, pick one, whatever one you pick." And I'm like, "All right." And I told her, "Please make the." like girliest slushy that you can and she did and it had like whipped cream with some like green sprinkled stuff probably the most sugar that tom's had had like umbrellas two and then had a straw that had like Ever. the gummy lifesavers were around this straw uh. he's like what is it i'm like i don't know dude drink it and then 
He goes to the bartender later on and says, give me the most disgusting slushy you can think of. <laughs> she gives him Jaeger with lemon lime. Oh. Back to being filthy. <laughs> <laughs> Back to being filthy. And he had difficulty with that one. Yes. Jaeger's gross. Jaeger's just, uh, it's, it's not good. Yeah. I just know that I walked in and I kept my traditional eye that said... <laughs> Give me one hundred dollars worth of shots right now. <laughs> <laughs> Were they prepared this time for you to just drop that? Uh, well, you know, shout out to the wonderful staff and uh, Jessica, the bartender. She always takes very well, very good care of the she AIW uh, crew. Yes, and uh, and Stosh was there, the, the owner. owner yes. Yeah, people had fun in the casket. I was going to say the booth. Casket was uh, photo the, booth. Casket was quite photo the attraction, booth. and then so too was the photo booth. <laughs> Shout out to the AW fans. It's, come on, guys. Let's keep it clean in the photo booth. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Ah, keep it classy. What happens to the photo booth? Stays. Does not does stay in the photo booth. Photo 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 Those pictures come right out. <laughs> they come out inside the photo booth, so you can pocket them. No, they come out on the outside. They don't come out on the outside? I think so. No, I don't think so. I, I've taken a lot of pictures of that photo booth. All right. You're <laughs> none like that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> The, did anybody get in the casket downstairs? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. PB did, PB. which is like kind of weird. Yeah. Oh, Tom Waller did too. Yeah, uh, he made me take uh, a PB, video of him sitting PB up. got in and then uh, deleted the, the photos off social media because he thought that they were inappropriate. Well, they're just they're weird. Just having fun. <coughs> he doesn't like appropriate, but they are fit in the casket. He doesn't like fun. And it was a big casket. Yeah. Big man. Uh, Call the coroner. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Call a corner for me because then the after after party. The after after, after party. Good mix of humans. At about six in the morning, fell asleep. You know. Yeah, those after after. Woke parties. up at about four p.m. the next day. Went about my day. Dude, I I woke up in like a sugar shock the next day. I I, I don't know if I <laughs> slept or not. Like I just like I think I just shook all night long. My right kidney started. Dude, you went like, Bob Evans at eight in the morning. I knew something was wrong. Yeah, I couldn't sleep, man. <laughs> I, I get up. You're at Bob Evans. I get up. I'm like, hey, when are we going to Bob Evans? I already went. I'm like, it's 9:30. <laughs> Dude, I was like, I was just in a weird, weird state. What'd you get from the Bob Evans? Chicken noodles. Y- yeah, you got the chicken and noodle soup. Yeah, even at eight, eight a.m. F- fucking right. All right. You had soup this morning. <laughs> wow, you love that soup. I love soup, dude. Yeah. Well, the other thing that happened uh, at the show in general was we talk about live audience. We have not talked about it here on the podcast yet, but it has since been announced on social media and we announced it at the show to the live crowd that emma would be joining us fka emma. fka emma tenille dashwood will be joining us in february tasty tenille yeah so tasty everybody taste look- of tenille that's our youtube show yeah yeah, yeah. not t- <laughs> <laughs> whatever man you follow her on instagram no well it works either way man taste of or e all right <laughs> easy and for anybody wondering, I got a thing for Australians. <laughs> this did come up on social media, and uh, there was a little bit of chatter between some of us. We did try to pitch John Thorne on a Captain and Tennille name, and that didn't happen. It didn't happen. And didn't then happen. how many people wanted, suggested and it? And a lot like, people, why did that happen? A lot of people Love suggested it. will keep us it. together. It was one of the first ever <laughs> fucking, fucking uh, three, behind three, the musics, man. Three, <laughs> back when that shit counted. Three people on fucking Twitter suggested it. <laughs> three very smart people on Relax. Twitter. Relax. Yeah. People, people. That's a very loose term, dude. You guys, you guys are fans of the week. Who, that's not an award. Yeah, we three, just start it three, right now. Three people and fucking Joe Spostos. <laughs> yeah, well. Joe is really pitching that hard, too. He was. Yeah, he was a big fan. And, of and President Matt Wadsworth. Yeah, and I threw it out there. Yeah. I tossed it out initially. Matt Wise was on board. He had to help me explain who Captain and Tennille were to some of you. Fuck that. Well, I'm, I'm young. I, I told yeah, my dad. I'm like, what Like, what? What do you think? I'm not trying to fucking cater to your dad's generation. <laughs> and, uh, Josie and the Pussycats. They had them in Josie and the Pussycats because they were watching the behind the music and it was about like the black guy that got like bounced out of the Captain and Tennille and then that was like helped bring down the pussy. It was a great movie. I don't watch that fucking. Dude, that was one of the best movies. That new late that 90s, never seen yeah, late that 90s, Pussycats? Josie and the Pussycats yeah. where Rosario Dawson's like, just scary, huge. Bo- right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, we're, we're hedging on creepy right now. We're alive. Easy. I'm uh, I have a date later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're all amped up for that. Uh, apparently, good for you. Well, very nice girl. I think I. Who Rosario Daniel Dashwood, no. Rosario Dawson, or the date? Uh, all three. All, all three. Okay, good. Well, cheers to them. I think that pretty much covers anything. I don't think we missed anything from the show and the after party. I don't right? book uh, Rosario Dawson. 
<laughs> I'm sure she doesn't she's even wrestle. Find her agent and then let us know. All right, we're gonna figure oh, that boy. out. Ah, uh, well, I can only imagine how much she wants. I tried to book Johnny Bananas. He wanted like ten grand. I, I still can't believe you did fire off that email last summer. Still waiting on CT's fucking response. Oh, we still need fucking uh, ogre. From uh, Bloodsport. Oh, fucking. I tried. We, me and Biggins tried to book him for a gauntlet for the cold once, actually. <laughs> get out. <laughs> Can't get a hold of him. He owns a bar somewhere in Chicago. Let me know if you can get a hold of Ogre. Yeah, we got some Chicago Ray listeners. Jackson. Find him. So, on that note. Jackson, you look like a Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, for uh, Dr. Dan, Worldwide, Anytime. John Any Thorne, uh, my name is Steve Guy. We'll talk to you guys next week. Filthy Todd has never seen Bloodsport. <laughs> <laughs>